Hey everyone, it's Crystal Ann Compton, and this is a special Tuesday audio post in which I answer your spiritual and your personal questions. As some of you may or may not know, I actually get a lot of email from people all over the world, and they ask me all kinds of really interesting questions. Some people just need a little psychic insight. Some people just need a little help, while other people have broad metaphysical spiritual questions. But because I no longer give one-on-one readings, I am often unable to answer these questions. And I wanted to find a way to be able to ask you to send them in so that I could take them to spirit and come back and give you an answer because I, I really do care about you. I also know that a lot of the answers that spirit gives don't apply to just one person. They actually apply to many of us because you'd be surprised. So many other people that you don't even know are going through circumstances and experiences similar to your own. So when spirit answers one person's question, it is common that many, many people get answers that they need. Each week, what I'm going to do is post my answers to three personal questions and three spiritual questions. Now, the personal questions are kind of going to be like mini psychic readings that are specific to one person. But again, the answer that I give that one person is likely to apply to a lot of you. The spiritual questions, on the other hand, are going to be broader in scope and will cover all kinds of different topics. And here's where I really want to encourage you guys to get weird. Like I love the weird, complex, metaphysical questions. And so you can ask me anything. It could be about chakras. It could be about aliens. It could be about fairies or the Akashic records, you name it. And I'm willing to answer it. And if I don't know the answer to the question, I will definitely take that into session to get the answer from spirit. And speaking of spirit, I just want you to know that this entire process of answering your questions is divinely inspired. And so as I move through the questions that you send me via email, spirit actually prompts me as to the emails that I should select. And I do believe that's because the answers that spirit gives, again, are going to apply to many of you out there. Now, if you'd like a spiritual or a personal personal question answered, I encourage you to write me via email at TuesdayQuestions at CrystalAnnCompton.com. That's TuesdayQuestions, which is one word, at CrystalAnnCompton.com. I've also included a link to that email here in this blog post. Now, last week, when I first announced that I was going to be doing this, some of you actually sent your questions to my personal email. I am unable to answer any questions that are sent to any other email address than TuesdayQuestions at CrystalAnnCompton.com. So please make sure that's where you're sending your questions. Now, without further ado, and since all of that administrative stuff is out of the way, let's get right into the first question that's been selected. This question was asked by Jeannie S. She asks, what is the best way to deal with interdimensional beings that are service to self and also to get rid of them if necessary? First, what I'd like to do is just explain what an interdimensional is because I realize that not everybody is familiar with that term. An interdimensional is simply a being that can travel transdimensionally. In other words, it can travel from its dimension into various other dimensions and specifically into our dimension. Now, human beings are actually also interdimensional beings insofar as we can also transdimensionally travel. It's just that most of us don't really know how to do that. But that's what an interdimensional is. We do tend to consider interdimensionals, however, as aliens. And that's where the service to self thing comes in, because aliens are a lot like people, or interdimensionals are a lot like people. Just as you have some really great people You also have some really terrible people. Same thing with interdimensionals. You have some service to other 
interdimensionals. And these are the good ones. They're here to help us and to help others. But you also have the service to self interdimensionals and they are running their own agenda and they tend to be lower in vibration or negative in energy and vibration. And so she wants to know how she can get rid of these service to self or lower vibration entities. And I have one word for that and it's dominion. I'll say it again. I love the word dominion. What is dominion? Well, a lot of us come out of the Christian paradigm or the Christian system. And when we were in that system, we were taught via the Bible that in the beginning, God gave man or humans dominion, dominion over the planet, dominion over the animals, dominion over the oceans, etc. But what God also did, and really the most important thing God did, was God gave us dominion over this dimension. That's right. We have dimensional dominion. This means that there is no other being, whether of this dimension or otherwise, that can share our space, make themselves manifest, do anything to us, interact with us in any way, unless we allow it. Or, if we allow it, they must do so according to our terms. This is our dimension. We have dominion. Every other being that shares this dimensional space, and let me just tell you, there are countless other beings sharing your space in this very moment. It's just that you can't see them because they're vibrating at a different rate. But every single one of those beings knows that you have dominion, that it was given to humans. They also know, however, when you are unaware that you have dominion. And so it's these beings who share our dimension, maybe they're in the astral or they're in another level, who make themselves manifest or materialize in our environment and proceed to frighten us or oppress us or harass us because they know that we don't know that we have dominion. But the moment we do, the moment we know and we step into and occupy the energy of our power and sovereignty, that's when all of these problems go away. And it's not just the beings in our dimension. It's the beings in any dimension. If you enter the human dimension, you are entering a zone where humans have dominion. And so, Jeannie, you don't just need to know this. You need to run this. You have to run the energy of dominion. The beings themselves must feel that you know that you have dominion. I often use Jesus Christ as an example because I come out of the Christian system and I'm going to use Jesus Christ again as an example right now. But Jesus was an avatar who totally knew that he had dominion and he would tell a group of demons to get out of this man and jump into a herd of swine and run into the sea and Jesus would call Lazarus forth from the dead and Jesus would walk on water because he ran it. He knew it. He was a human who had dominion and he told us, if you said to that mountain, jump into the sea, it would. If you just had faith, if you just realized your power as a spiritual being. Christ was an avatar. Buddha was an avatar. Babaji was an avatar who understood the principle of dominion. And so now it is our work and Jeannie, perhaps your work, if you have a problem with interdimensionals, to learn how to not just understand, but to occupy and run dominion energy. And I'd like to give you an example very quickly of what that feels like, because it's one thing for me to tell you, you've got to run dominion energy and quite another thing for you to actually know what that feels like so that you can run it right? So let me give you an example. This is actually an example that I used in a class that I gave a few months ago called Everything Psychic. So some of you I know are my former students. I'm going to give this example again. You might hear it twice, but that's just because it's so powerful. Here's a great example of dominion. Imagine if you had a child and that child was about four years old and you knew the child was in the living room watching cartoons. And you got up and you began to approach the living room. And the child couldn't see you yet because maybe you're in the hallway. And as you approach the child, you hear what sounds like somebody else in the room. And as you listen more closely, you know somebody else is in the room. And you hear what they're saying to your child. And you can hear that they are speaking evil 
over your child. They are saying the most terrible things to that four-year-old child, your child. What would you do? Please try and visualize this right now. Try and feel that. What would you do? Especially all the moms, the dads, the aunts, the uncles. Are you starting to feel what you would feel in that situation? Because that is dominion. If that were me and I was rounding the corner and I came upon somebody speaking evil over any child, you better believe I would take that person by the scruff of their neck and escort them, not gently, out of my house. I would make sure they were out of my space, never to return again, because that's my child. This is my house. You don't get to come into my house and do that to my child. That's dominion. That's the power that you feel as a mama bear, as a papa bear. That's the power you are entitled to feel as the human being with dominion in this dimension. And so that's the energy you want to occupy when confronted by an interdimensional that is service to self or any other lower level negative entity. They do not have the right to be in your space. They do not have the right to harass you or to harass yours, period, point blank. The sooner you can occupy, the sooner that will be your reality. Let's move on to the next question. This question comes from Idy, and she says that she was once able to see golden light literally beaming out of the palms of her hands. She also says that from time to time, if she prays for somebody, she can heal them. And she wanted to know if this was something that was in her future or that's something she should pursue. And my answer to that is absolutely. As I check in and hook in with spirit, I do feel strongly that you have healing ability. However, spirit is also showing me that we have patterns here that act as obstructions. And these are patterns in that which we do. And these are patterns in that which we do not do. And so the patterns in which we do are the things that we do that we ought not to do because they take away from or detract from our spirituality or they knock us out of alignment. These can be a variety of things. This can involve self-talk, how we treat others, how we eat, the drugs that we take, etc. Many, many things can knock us off course. And then there are the things that we do not do. And these are your spiritual disciplines and your spiritual practices. Things like meditation, things like getting out into nature and intuitive movement. These are things like praying and fellowship and studying all of the behaviors that we should cultivate if we want to click into more dynamic connection with source energy. So spirit is showing me that you have a little bit of both. You are doing some of the things that you should be doing and you are doing some things that you probably shouldn't be doing that are knocking you out of alignment. So clean up the patterns. I often tell my students, that the hardest work that they do as spiritual seekers seeking enlightenment is to dig into their personal psychology, to get into the patterns and the behaviors and the triggered responses because that's the stuff that acts as a barrier. It acts as an obstruction. So spirit shows me you have some of this and that's okay. Pretty much we all do. I've got stuff, you've got stuff, who doesn't have stuff? But you do have to set the intention that you want to work through your stuff. You want to unravel those patterns. You want to clear the patterns and then bring in the light. You have some work to do in this area, but when you do it, this ability to heal will grow. Last thing I want to tell you, Idy, is please consult your emissaries. Your emissaries are your angels and your guides and your friends in spirit. These beings are there for your utmost support. And it is their main mission to keep you connected to source energy as closely as possible. That's why they're here. And so if you want to follow your life's path, your purpose, your healing ministry, the angels and your guides absolutely want to help you to do that. So turn to your emissaries and ask them in the name of God to provide resources that will help you to break 
behaviors and patterns and clear those patterns and also to move toward the modality of healing that you should be conducting, whether that's Reiki or therapeutic touch or chakra alignment. I happen to think it's more about attunements and adjustments, which are modifications to help somebody get to the next level in their enlightenment. That's what it feels like to me. But ask your angels to provide you with those resources because that's the kind of stuff they love to do. Okay? Moving on to the next question. This question comes from Laura G and she asks, what is the spiritual meaning or the lesson of an induced abortion? Why does it happen to some women? And first I just want to say and acknowledge that we're talking about miscarriage and this is of course a truly painful thing that some women have experienced and it can take quite a while to get over it. And when I hooked in with spirit, I wanted to see what spirit wanted to talk about around this particular subject. And what came through was quite interesting. And I, I want you all to listen because if this hasn't happened to you, it's probably happened to someone that you know, and it may happen to someone that you know in the future. And this may help them to understand why spiritually this happens. First and foremost, a miscarriage is a physiological issue. This is something that's happening within the physical body, and it is not a spiritual consequence. So I really need you to hear that because a lot of women get wrapped up in what they've done wrong and what did they do to bring this on, etc. And you have to free yourself of that kind of guilt because it's not about your energy. It's not about your spirituality. It's not about the good or the bad that you do. It is a physiological body thing, period and point blank. In fact, a soul is literally downloaded in increments into a fetus and a soul does not fully occupy a baby until approximately one week to two weeks after they were born. One week to two weeks. The soul makes sure that the body or the vehicle is viable, that it's healthy and that everything is going to work out. And so the soul doesn't even begin to download until later in the process. And if a soul does not have a viable host or a viable vehicle or fetus, it will try again. This means many women will get pregnant again. And the second child that is born is the same soul that attempted to come through the first time. If a woman is unable for some reason to conceive again or to give birth again, then the soul chooses someone close to the woman or the man because there is a contract involved. Anytime a child is born to someone, there is a karmic soul agreement that needs to be worked out. And if that soul cannot come through the woman, the soul will find another way into the woman's condition or experience, or again, the father's condition and experience. I find this, and I hope you do too, to be very heartening and very hopeful. If you have suffered a miscarriage or if you have lost a child, then feel confident that that child is going to make its way into your condition, whether it's through your body or whether it's through the body of someone that you know, they will make their way into your life because you have a soul agreement with them. To wrap this up, miscarriages happen to some women because some women have physiological issues or physical problems or a physical misalignment that causes the miscarriage. It is not a spiritual penalty that anybody has to suffer. It is strictly about the body. Let's move on now to the next question, which comes in from Tammy J. Tammy says that she's feeling a bit lost. She doesn't know her contracts or her life purpose. She also feels like her time in Boise, Idaho might be coming to an end and she has a niece who lives in Big Bear, California, who is encouraging her to move to California and she wants to know whether that move is a good move to make. Well, when I checked in with Spirit, the first response I got was a strong response and that was a yes. Yes, this place is a good match for you. And then what Spirit said was that you should be visualizing this space before you get there. And so you send your energy and your consciousness and your intention 
out to Big Bear or to the place that you want to live and you begin to design the life in the mind. You begin to design the life in the intentions and in the thoughts and you go forward this way first to prepare the space for you. Begin now to see it for yourself and to visualize. Another thing that came through Tammy was interesting because I don't obviously know you. I don't know if you're married. I don't know if you have a significant other. It kind of doesn't feel like that for me, but there is someone in this location. So in this Big Bear, California location that you are supposed to partner with, meet, perhaps get into a romantic sort of a relationship with. I don't know if that's something that even interests you, but it doesn't have to be romantic. It could just be a very important human relationship that you're supposed to experience that takes place in this area. So this is just another reason that Big Bear is actually a good choice for you. Keep in mind, of course, that I'm an intuitive on the internet and you should never replace anybody else's judgment for your own. So really tap into your own intuition and ask yourself that question because your spirit will always respond. Your body is always talking to you and your body will tell you exactly what it is that you need to do. But on my end, it feels really good. The next question is from Shonda W and she says that she's a nature person. She says nature recharges her batteries and makes her feel more spiritually connected. However, she lives up north and it's about to get, as she calls it, damn cold. She's wondering what my sources say are the best alternatives when getting outside is hugely challenging. And I really love this question because what Shonda's keying in on is the powerful signature or vibration of nature energy, earth energy. Earth energy is actually extremely similar in signature to source energy. And source energy is the most divine, powerful energy any of us will ever come into contact with. This means that when we put our energy, which is our body, out into nature, out into earth energy, we allow ourselves to take in and to absorb, to assimilate and distribute all of that high vibration. It is a really quick way to raise your light quotient, which is what makes nature a really powerful way to connect to source. And there are a lot of things that you can do to bring nature inside during the winter months. I'll suggest a few things, but you're going to have to check it out for yourself, see what you really respond to, and check the energy in everything, as I always say, because you're going to be a match for some things more than you'll be a match for other things. The first thing I would recommend, if you can, is to have pets or if you already have pets, to spend more time with your pets. Your pets are teeming with earth energy. That means they are teeming with high vibration energy. And when you spend time with them, when you allow your pet to be naturally in its own vibration, you are also able to take into yourself their vibration. There's a book called Power Versus Force written by Dr. David Hawkins, I think his name is. And he calibrates things based on vibration from zero to a thousand. And he says when a dog is wagging his tail, he's calibrating at around 500 or 600. Compare that to the natural signature of a human being, which is about 180 to 250. I want to say if I recall correctly, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it's much lower. When a cat is purring or a dog is wagging its tail, it is emanating high vibration energy because they love you. God is love. Source energy is love. Being able to have pets in your environment and in your space gives you a direct route to high vibration energy. If you can't have pets or animals, you can do something like bring in living things, plants, and flowers. You can have a water feature because water is also filled with earth energy. I know at Bed Bath & Beyond you can get little fountains. There's all kinds of different things or different ways that you can bring in plants, flowers, and water. But one of the most powerful ways to bring the signature of nature into your home is through crystals and gemstones. Now crystals obviously come from the earth and they're also programmed with their own specific energetic attributes. So they're resonating, they're vibrating with earth energy, which is nature energy, and also their attribute. Some crystals are protective, 
some crystals are helpful for channeling, some crystals anchor spaces, etc., etc. So you can actually use those crystals, interact with those crystals in order to take in more nature energy. And one of the best ways to do that is to create a crystal grid in your home. A crystal grid is just a grid that is based usually on a sacred geometrical pattern or some other type of pattern and it anchors specific spaces in your house and it allows specific energy to run through your house. It really literally creates highways and byways and ley lines within your house that match or are calibrated to the energy of those crystals. And so if you select high vibration crystals and then you set them out in your space to create a grid that is always running and it is always expressing energy, you are bringing nature energy by virtue of having those crystals into your space. But again, there's a lot of different ways to bring nature energy indoors until such time as you can get out again to enjoy beautiful spring, beautiful summer, and beautiful fall. The last question is from Kara L. C-A-R-A. Kara tells us that she was in a relationship that ended around 2011, and she was just wondering whether spirit saw a nice gentleman coming into her life in the future. And I hooked in on your behalf, Kara, and I checked it out. I checked out the energy, and what it looks like for this year, and certainly the remainder of this year, is a larger focus on business, a larger focus on money, a larger focus on those types of energies, but within 2017, probably toward the last half and even the first half of 2018, I do see someone entering your life. So this is a love relationship. This is a soulmate relationship, meaning this person is very important to you. However, spirit also says at the same time, not to forget that we attract what we are. If we're low vibration, if we're angry, if we're sad, if we're fearful, we attract people who calibrate to those same energies. And so in order to attract into our lives people of higher quality and vibration, we have to work on our own vibration. This is what spirit wants you to do for about the next year. Spirit wants you to focus on those things that bring you joy. As I tap into your energy, I can feel that you have this really beautiful charisma about you. You're a creative, expressive person, and so you probably have creative interests. You want to make sure that you are spending enough time doing those things that you love to do, doing those things that you know stir these beautiful, passionate energies within you, because that creator energy, that passion energy is extremely high vibration. Don't forget, God is the ultimate creator. And anytime we create something, no matter what it is, we are tapping into that high vibration creator energy. So the more time you can spend working on your vibration, working on yourself, doing those things that you love, the more you'll augment or modify your vibration and raise it. And then the gentleman comes into your life. So not right now, but definitely coming in about a year, but you need to prepare yourself before he gets here. Well, that was our last question, and I just want to thank everybody who listened to this broadcast. I hope you come back next week to listen again to six more questions and six more answers. And if you have a question, please feel free to send that question to TuesdayQuestions at CrystalAnnCompton.com. Until then, I hope that you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today.